What matters most is that Doug Peterson and Trent Baalke are seemingly on the same page. I'll tell you how that affects the Jaguars in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you and welcome to another edition of Locked On Jaguars. I'm Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, where it's your team every day. And we thank you for making us your first listen, reminding you that it is also free to subscribe to our YouTube page and make sure you catch us wherever you get your podcasts on all platforms daily to make sure that you get your Locked On Jaguars podcast content as i try to give it to you every single day here straight with no chaser because it's your team every day all right here's what we're going to discuss today we're going to discuss that doug peterson and trent balky appear to be on the same page whether it's a page that fans by the way when i describe what's going on it's not necessarily my opinion just out of nowhere it's an opinion because i listen and i listen to doug peterson i listen to trent balky and i'll tell you a couple of things that they said here that may set you free and may allow you to understand exactly why I feel that the team is doing certain things. And and, and then I'm going to talk about whether or not those things uh, will work or not. Uh, I'll give you an example. I'm sure two years ago, someone did a Rams pod, my boy Sosa, who used to do the Rams podcast. I'm sure when the Rams were trading all of these picks and all of these things and giving away all of these things for these nice shiny veterans, I'm sure that at some point someone said, it better work because if it doesn't work, here's where we're going to be. So the here's where the Rams are going to be is where the Rams are right now, right? But it worked because they won a Super Bowl. Had it not worked, had they not won that Super Bowl, heads would be rolling and people would be getting fired other than players being traded. So this is the it's the positive and the negative connotation from what might happen. And even though the same thing happened because they got results, nobody cared. And everybody said it was all worth it. That's what our job is here. That's what we do. We point out the pros and cons. Also, it's not if I say that red is my favorite color, that that means I don't like blue. Therefore, when I say that I understand that Trent Baalke is correct by building the team through the draft and supplementing the team through free agency, I totally agree with his philosophy. I don't think you need to just ignore free agency in order to adhere to the the fact that you're going to build through the draft. Remember, he said two things. He said that they were going to build through the draft and they were going to supplement through free agency. Now, I think sometimes folks think supplement means a part that's not important. I don't think that's what it is. I think supplement means we're going to get less parts from that area than we are from here. So it doesn't mean they're just going to go out and sign a bunch of special teams guys and long snappers. They could sign a starting nickel, but they could just sign one guy. They could get a big-time pass rusher, but it's just one guy. They could get a big-time tight end or a wide receiver, and it's just one guy. It doesn't mean the guy's not important. It doesn't mean it's just – see, I I think people are looking at it like the the way they do undrafted free agents. Yeah, you supplement your team with undrafted free agents. I get it but they don't ignore it. They don't, you don't ignore anything. So saying that you're going to be a team that uses the draft mostly at this stage, I get it. And I agree with it. It just doesn't mean that you don't use the other one too. It's just that you put more emphasis on this one. If they weren't going to get guys from other teams of free agency, they wouldn't even have a pro personnel department. Hello. Hello. And I also want people to remember this, that when you're trying to give GM jobs to people on TV, understand that a lot of those people were pro personnel directors and not player personnel directors or directors of college scouting, which I continue to tell people over the years that they're not equal. They aren't equal. So the same people that say wanted to hire Lewis Riddick are the same people that 
are sitting here just totally bashing free agency just because the team isn't because the team isn't using free agency. So I wanted to clear that up. I also wanted to to clear up this this thing about keeping the locker room. This is where I disagree with Trent a little bit. He says we like the locker room. We kind of, you know, we're going to go more draft and free agency because we okay, first of all, a draft pick can screw the locker room up too. And then the locker room that you do have is when it comes to looking at players the Jacks went very, very heavy in free agency for two years in a row. But now all of a sudden, because a guy says he wants to keep the locker room, now all of a sudden, if you go get a free agent, a free agent, a part of your process is getting locker room guys, right? Players who can play who also fit the culture. A whole bunch of those guys, you, you know, it's almost like saying, well, we don't want no free agents. Well, you got a bunch of do- Christian Kirk was a free agent. Is he a locker room cancer? What about what about uh Zay Jones? So this this whole thing about every little thing that somebody says that they mean this in this grandiose big way. Now, nah, if they thought free agents tore up the locker room, then they'd have to get rid of half the team they have right now because those guys were free agents. Foyle Lowell was he a cancer to a locker room? Nah. So it, it's hard pressed for me to think that. You can't find one or two guys just like that to add to your team. He's done an okay job in free agency, so why not continue to do it? If you want to just make it all about just the draft, see, it's good to say that stuff when you actually need a free agent, but now you got to go against what you said and you got to go out and actually get one in free agency when you're one player away. The other thing is there's a lot of people that hung up on me and Jawan Taylor. Like we're one and the same. No, some people say they look like me, but I, I don't know. But he's a real nice kid. My thing with Juwan Taylor ain't about Juwan Taylor. Newsflash. My thing with Juwan Taylor is about the Jaguars and it's about Trevor Lawrence. When the Jaguars say we want to draft and retain, that's exactly what Juwan Taylor was. He was draft and retain. And a good reason to retain him is because he helps keep your quarterback upright. And he did that better than anybody you've seen over the last couple of years. He's the best at it. He was the best on our team at that. And that's why I wanted to keep him. I don't want Trevor hurt. I don't want Trevor to even think about being hurt. I don't want his uniform dirty. The guy that gives me the best chance of that happening is the dude that we walked out of the door. So all of that stuff and all of that heat and all of that stuff I give people about Juwan Taylor is about keeping Trevor Lawrence upright with the best possible player that you can find to do that. And he was right here in your face. The other part of it is this. If, if, if we're the draft and retain people, then that's the one and telling me that, well, it's because we overpaid cam a year before. So a mistake is going to keep you from making a better decision. That is, that is a terrible, terrible thing to say to me or to anybody else. So that's where I'm at. It comes from a good place. It don't come from trying to be right. It comes from hoping that 16 is upright. Or some of y'all, maybe you're just concerned with the fact that he speaks to you in public and he's at the local Waffle House. I don't know. Uh, Trevor doesn't have to ever say a word to me. I just don't want him hurt, and I don't want him on the ground, and I don't want him running for his life. And, yeah, it was only one year, but guess what? That's all we've had with Doug Peterson. So I'd say this is the first year that any of those players have had really, really good coaching And the first chance you get good coaching, guess who shows up? He does. Same thing with Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram left the Giants and came here and got good coaching. And now he's got the franchise tag, but no one says anything. You know why they don't say nothing? It's because he plays a position where he catches the ball and scores touchdowns. And the other thing is his franchise tag doesn't cost as much as it would would have with Jawan Taylor. The cap isn't real. You know why I know it's not real? Because Trent Baalke himself stood up and said it ain't about the cap, it's about cash. And he laughed and scoffed at the notion that anybody thought that the salary cap was going to keep them from signing whoever they wanted to. He said it. I didn't. Well, he's got to look out for the future, Wig. Do you realize that every contract they've signed have been one or two or three year deals? When folks talk about the future, they're talking about down the line. They ain't talking about one or two or three years. In fact, they signed Roy Robinson Harris after Trent Baalke took over as GM. Do you know they re-signed him already? No 
nobody's talking about the future. If fit folks love throwing stuff in the argument that have nothing to do with it. What are you talking about the future? What are you talking about the locker room when half the locker room is made up of free agents? What do you mean? What, what What's going to happen? Well, they have to manage the cap. They don't. Haven't y'all seen with New Orleans and other places that the cap ain't real? If there was somebody out there that the Jaguars wanted right now that cost $30 million a year, they could figure it out and make it happen. And they know it, and he to they told you that. So at least you want to debate with me or come with me and, and say that I'm creating narratives for clicks and all that. And that's the kind of stuff that gets you blocked, too, because now you're impugning my character and telling me why I'm saying what I'm saying when all I'm doing is using what the people that y'all love so much i'm using exactly what they say and i'm saying okay this is what they're saying is either going to work or not but you don't have to be totally all in that way in order to to want to function that way i don't know man i'm going to tell you something that doug peterson said to me directly for a question that i asked him that might give you guys a, a little bit of an understanding as to why i think that doug and and uh trent are definitely on the same page and that's a good thing and i'll tell you why that's important too in just a second here on locked on jaguars after i let you know that today's show is brought to you by and sponsored by FanDuel. the tournament is heating up and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, america's number one sports book because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars that's right as bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drain. Man, I'm telling you right now, this tournament has got me glued to the television, and I'd be even more happy if you could win some money. We could win some money, right? So Plus, FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay so don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on that's fanduel.com slash lock locked on to learn more make every moment more with fanduel an official sports betting partner of the nba running it down with you here on locked on jaguars i'm tony wiggins the host of the locked on jaguars podcast where it's your team every day we thank you for making us your first listen if you're new here thank you for joining us please don't mind me being hyped and mind me being yelling and talking i don't mind disagreement i just don't mind disagreement that comes i, I don't like disagreement that comes with accusations uh when what we're doing here is we're, we're creating content and, and we're using the words of the words and the actions of uh trent balky and others uh, to try to figure out why and give you the points uh, and the viewpoints from different points of view and maybe, you know, make you understand this entire process a little bit. Um, one thing I do very well, I talk real good, but I also listen real well. And I asked Doug Peterson earlier this year, I think it was after week three, probably when they beat the Chargers. It may have been when they went up and beat the Titans. I know it was after a big game and I asked Doug Peterson because he had have a, had a big enough picture at that time. And it's hard enough to have a, it's hard to have a big picture of a team when you were this, just a first year coach. But I was real careful when I crafted the question, I asked him seeing the, the Eagles when they won the Super Bowl in 2017 and seeing this team at those same stages of those teams, not after a team won. So it's hard to, three or four weeks in and imagine this team being just like the team that hope you know hoisted the lombardi trophy but seeing those two teams at the same period how, how similar were they in terms of talent and and where they were he said they weren't far off and i'm gonna paraphrase because i don't actually remember the exact uh answer he gave but he said it's close he says you know what it's supposed to look like and you know it's it's a lot of similarities it's a lot of some differences in personnel and, and people and where they are. I don't think there's a Fletcher Cox on this team who's in his prime. Fletcher's going to Hall of Fame, and I don't know if there's a Hall of Fame defensive tackle on this team right now. Uh, Malcolm Jenkins was a leader. I, I don't know if you have that matched, and you don't have a big receiver like Alshon. Last year, Evan Ingram played similar to Zach Ertz. I don't think he's Zach Ertz, but – there are some points, some places on this team, obviously quarterback, where the talent level and the difference in talent is tremendously in Jaguars' favor. I think 
Travis Etienne at running back. I think Christian Kirk as that number two receiver is way better than uh, Nelson Aguilar. And, and of course, um, Travis Etienne and, 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 and the quarterback, I think they were better in, in those situations. But the way Doug was speaking is like they aren't far off. And he and if he really believes that, then I understand more and more of this. Let's just bring the whole – let's run it all back with everybody. I really, really do get that. And being around guys every day and knowing their work ethic and knowing how they – the workflow between practice and the games and knowing how they prepare, having that over the unknown I, I think is also – a big I think it's a big advantage I, I think the biggest thing that I did you know I, I don't like about what I've seen so far in free agency the free agency is don't act like you're allergic to it just because you want to do something else and change the focus of the way that you're doing things right if there's that's why I asked the question yesterday you mean to tell me you ain't see nobody that you think could help you but you saw 13 guys one year and then like last year you saw 10 people that could help the team and none of them caused a problem in the locker room. But now people want to bring up locker room when it comes to when it comes time to grabbing a free agent. I, I just don't get it. The team is constructed at their critical positions with half of guys that were not drafted. But yet and still, we're, we're going to sit here and act like because we're moving in a different direction and focusing more on the draft, that there's a chance that a guy who we get in free agents is going to mess up the locker room. I, I don't buy that. And – I also don't think that, you know, there, there are a few ways you can um, accrue talent, right? Draft, trades, and free agency. To just totally eliminate one of them because of a strict structure that you – I just think it's a mistake. And I know free agency isn't over. But we can tell by some of the deals that people have signed that haven't been blockbusters. We think all the, the deals signed early are all going to be the big blockbuster deals like they've been in the past. And then the money will come down later. Well, I've seen guys go for almost dirt cheap early. I think you have to target who you want, even if you're going to be frugal in spending in free agency. You still find the guy you want and you target him. You tell me that if this strategy was in place, that they would not have targeted Jamal Agnew. That's see, that's what I'm talking about. Teams are signing guys for bargains. Teams are signing guys that they're targeting that don't cost a lot of money. This notion that if if you go out and sign one or two guys in free agency, that that means you're going to break the bank is wrong. And this is that's the narrative. Somebody will say I'm accused of creating a narrative. The narrative is this whole narrative that and I'm using narrative. That's the fourth time I've said it. But this whole thing that says that if you're at least marginally active in free agency, that that means that you're not a draft first guy. Let me tell you about draft first personnel guys. They are that way regardless if whether the team is one and 16 or 16 and 0 or 16 and 1. They're draft first guys, right? The last two years, the Jaguars have been a free agency or overwhelmingly spending more money in free agency because of the way the team was. Most guys who adhere to this, well, we're really just going to draft and develop and then supplement through free agency. They do it regardless of what the record is. History shows it. They do it regardless of what the record is. They're going to do it. They're going to draft and they might. Pittsburgh did it forever. And so did the Packers. When, when they were against, they, they didn't spend money outside of the organization that much. If they did, it was a piece here and a piece there. They, whether they were good or bad, and both of those organizations have been good more than bad, they really, really didn't focus on, on the, the, the. And then this other thing, like all of a sudden, if you don't want to mess up your future, okay, show me a show me a contract that Trent Baalke has given anybody that's been over three years. There might be one, but offhand, like I said, Roy Robertson Harris has been re-signed already, and he just got here two years ago. So the thing is, is most of the contracts the Jaguars have been given are one, two, or three-year deals. That's why they had to franchise Evan Ingram. So when have they not worried about the future in free agency? I don't, I don't understand where it comes from. Look up the Jag salary cap status in 2026 right now. And it, they say the Jags are like $229 million, expected to be $229 million. You know why? Because they haven't screwed around their future the way everyone keeps sitting here saying that they will.
and even in 2025 do the same thing it's like over 100 million dollars the jaguars are not and have never screwed their future up when it comes to that it, they just haven't done it all right so i'm going to name a name or two that might be associated with the 24th pick whether they fall to the jaguars or they don't fall to the jaguars if the jaguars just come up and get them or move down and get them. We'll talk about it in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. First, I have to let you know today's episode is sponsored by Built Bar. Look at that Built Bar March Madness. Man, it is off the chain. The Built March Madness bracket is here. We know you have a favorite bar or puff, and now it's your time to make it count. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. You know I'll be voting for the churro puff. And if you want the let's just say if you want the the brownie to win right you'll be voting for that bar too support your team support your bar or puff and when you vote for your favorite built bar or puff you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky locked on listeners will get a free box of built not only that but locked on one locked on fan will win a 12 months listen a 12 month subscription to built to have built best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door ain't that something and i better not find out if it's one of y'all because i'm gonna come get some you gotta try built built the best protein bar ever seriously there's so amazing you won't think they're good for you what makes what makes built and puffs so good well for starters they are all high in protein low in sugar and covered in 100 real chocolate that's right real chocolate run to built march madness.com right now to vote for your favorite built bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there you can vote every day in march so hop in and support your pick and we thank you for your support here on the locked on jaguars podcast making us your first listen every day now make your second listen locked on nfl scouting with the draft dudes from free draft uh, from free agency to the draft, salary cap management, and more. Join NFL experts, my boys, Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino, as they take you through what it's like to build a successful NFL franchise every Monday through Friday. Find Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are, man. We are your team every day. Um, names associated with the 24th pick i'm just going to remind y'all before i say this i know it wasn't the 24th pick but it was the 33rd pick no one had tyson campbell getting picked by the jack well nobody was thinking about tyson campbell right none nobody was thinking about that in fact a lot of people wonder why they didn't take asante samuel jr well both are really really good players right now i'll tell you that and they'd probably be split split down the middle if you go around the league and ask but the teams that would take tyson campbell first would probably say the first thing that differentiates him from uh, asante samuel jr is uh size traits the jaguars are one of those teams i can tell you right now the jaguars wouldn't trade him for him and i understand it but those size and traits lead me right back to the same place when i look at the draft and i see all of the names that have been associated with the jacksonville jaguars and that number 24 pick and i get it it's because most of the big boards are similar or close and i wouldn't want a big board to be different just for the sake of being different so teams are people are picking who is available at 24 that fits the need the best as long as you know it's, it's in a, an area where there's a whole bunch of guys stacked up and they're taking the best guy so i there's only going to be a handful of guys somebody between 24 and maybe 35 that teams think will be there but i'm gonna think outside of the box a little bit and i'm gonna believe that teams don't all see it uh, the same way and i'm gonna just go to a familiar place and that's the university of georgia where the jaguars have gone two straight years in a row this is my advanced scouting hat on here if you will you just go where the players are right the best players i think there's a chance the jaguars won't like it but somebody like keely ringo ends up being 24 fits the traits has played on that left side doesn't doesn't fit the nick very much i do see him as a guy though with his size and speed that they can line up in that slot and send him on a blitz i see that definitely see that 
And I do see someone, if they play the game a certain way where he doesn't have to have his back to the quarterback, I definitely see him being the pick. It's not necessarily my favorite. I like the Banks kid out of Maryland um, a lot. And uh, I really, really like Joy Porter uh, Jr. a lot. I'm just telling you, if they're not there or the Jaguars do what they have done in the past, like when they took Tyson Campbell over Santi Samuel Jr., I, I was like, why did they do that? Because Tyson had some tape from college that you wanted to just close your eyes, right? Well, Keeley has some tape from college that makes you want to close your eyes, but he does have these tremendous athletic traits that Trent Baalke seems to like. I'm going to stay right there and say in the second or third round, probably more of the third round, or if they maneuver a little bit, that Robert Beal, another guy from the University of Georgia, pass rusher, going in about 6'4", about 260, is another kid that they may uh, like a little bit more than everyone else. I'm being real now. Don't think for one minute that it may be that there may be some people on this list. I've seen Garrett Williams' name float around a little bit. If he weren't short, I'd take Sidney Brown and make him one of those guys because of the hard-nosed nature in which he plays. It's just that he's 5'10 and a half, 5'11, even though he can play, man. And that just doesn't seem to be what the Jaguars go for in the first, second, or the third round. So, yeah, guys with these long arms. I saw something about the the, the, the Carter kid from Army. I don't think so. Second or third round, though, wouldn't shock me because Trent Bach is always going for these long, angular players. And the, and the kid from Army sort of reminds me of a kid that he took in San Francisco uh, a while back, a kid from uh, Florida that went to South Florida. He committed to Florida State. Lynch, long arms. Raw, not real twitchy, but um, yeah, Trent Baalke likes long arm big guys, and he's not wrong in that sense because even coaches, man, coaches will see a dude that looks good in the airport and be like, I can make him a player. That's just the way that they're yoked. That's why you see so many basketball players coming. Coaches love athletes, and they figure it's their job to make them be able to play football better, but they just love those types of people. I think offensive line is going to be um, a priority. It's obvious that there are some players that will, will likely be around, whether it's Dewan Jones or the offensive tackle from Oklahoma that's really, really versatile. I just don't see the Jaguars drafting a swing offensive lineman in the first round, unless they're going to play Walker Little at left guard. And it's going to do that. They should have kept Trevon Walker, but I don't want to go back there and down that, that I don't want to go back down that again. Um, isn't it something though, if they could have just kept Taylor for one year at $20 million, put Walker at left guard, then Cam moves on and then they move Walker to left tackle. I'm just saying the cap is going up next year, man. Y'all could, they could have done something like that but they didn't. So here, here we are. Surprisingly, a lot of people think the interior of the offensive line is fixed and I don't. So that's why Osiris Torrance has been one of the dudes that I think about all the time, because I just don't want them to be good at that spot. I want them to dominate. And for a long time, I was against, man, you can get offensive linemen in the second or third round, just in the first round draft guys who score touchdowns or draft guys who stop you from scoring touchdowns. But I've changed and, and the changes come from the fact that I don't want 16 on the ground, man. I want him standing up. I want Trevor Lawrence healthy. I don't want him to get hurt, man. I, I, I don't want him running for his life. If you don't think that's real, go back and look at the Chiefs Super Bowl against the Bucs. <laughs> Mahomes was running for his life, and it was a bad result. If you ever think that a an offense with Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and – Tyreek Hill would only score nine points in a football game. The offensive line will do that. And I'm not saying the Jaguars is bad, but I'm just saying I am never, ever, 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 ever going to put Trevor in the line of fire if I can prevent it. And that's that's where my desire for them to, to, to retain him comes from. It also comes from the fact that they want to be a draft and retain um, outfit. And he was 25 years old and he was theirs. Keep him. Don't let nobody else get him, especially them 
but neither here nor there it's happened so hopefully you guys have a full understanding now and we can get back to getting along of why i feel the way i feel make sure you tune in every day every day here on locked on jaguars heading up to the draft we're gonna keep having more and more information with more names to drop check out draft dudes locked on um locked on nfl scouting with the draft dudes to get more information on draft picks as we get closer take care of each other we'll see you tomorrow here on locked on jaguars